Welcome, I'm Roddy Kasani, Analyst in Fixed Income at Tab Group, and I've got Martin Williams with me, who's uh, Vice President in Reference Data from Interactive Data, to talk to us about developments in, in, in the data side of the markets and, and what we're seeing uh, in, in outsourcing and, and benchmarking of data overall. At Tab, we, we've talked an awful lot about new regulations, what the requirements are, particularly as we hit the implementation phase for trade reporting. Um, so, so now that we we have a clear idea of what the requirements are under Emir Dodd Frank and the BCBS um, BS rules. How do you think about where people are in terms of readiness for compliance and how they manage the trade reporting data that they now have to report to regulators and whether the regulators are happy with the quality of that data? I think that firms are in a process of organizing their data in order to meet the um, the common themes within each of these regulatory initiatives. Um, the clients that we speak to, the market participants that we interact with that are at various stages of preparedness for um, meeting these guidelines, but they know that they've, they've got to get on with it. They've got to get moving, get their data organized, and be able to uh, report in a way that's very transparent it's very easy for the regulators to see where they got to, um, how they created their reports, and for the regulators to then be able to drill in, if need be, to understand exposure and um, different uh, um, under different uh, paradigms, if you will. Got you. So what you're doing is essentially creating the granularity necessary to be able to slice and dice your position data the asset class specific data and then also the specific trade data. It's critical to have that data organized at the core so that you can get down to the granular level and then roll back up to a high enough level where you can report to either an internal say risk officer or externally to regulatory uh, oversight as necessary. Interesting and we know from our experience on the fixed income side that a lot of people um, definitely didn't have access to that kind of data internally before. So now we have all this new extra data uh, and assuming it can be managed in a centralized way. Can you think of any other use cases or any extra functionality that people will now have that they didn't have before, um, given the fact that they will have access to that information? Or is it purely a kind of regulatory pr play at this point? The organization of the data at the core supports all of their use cases right across the securities management process. But just to give you an example, though, of what's possible now is if you're a fixed income trader and let's say you want to have access to an entire asset class, let's say municipal bonds, all 1.x million, maybe that's 1.4 or 5 million active municipal bonds, and you want that all available at your fingertips, you can now envision where that could be brought to the desktop of a trader or an analyst um, who wants to search through the entire municipal bond database to look for, say, 50 or 60 bonds that they might want to trade because they have specific characteristics of how they were issued or how they're supported, what their credit support might be, or, or what their current pricing and yield is, for example. That can now be brought to the desktop of that front office person, whereas in the past, I think it was um, a much bigger technological project and process in order to have that kind of capability. Got you. So it's one step beyond just trade reporting in your own positions. You can now have a benchmark, which is actually the entire universe of the data in some cases, that you can then utilize and um, compare and contrast across all of your positions. So Absolutely. That, that would be very useful from a transparency perspective. But if you think of the uh, workflow um, change internally. Does that then mean that you can deploy resources across? Does it help you manage and uh, control your costs, which I think is a very big issue these days? Or is it really just um, another rung in the evolution? How do you see that playing out? Is it one of, the, one of those three or all, all three of them working together? In essence, it's all three working together. I do think your um, the, the cost equation is is critical today, especially because of the um, requirements that firms have to be able to organize their data in certain ways uh, in order to be able to meet regulatory guidance, for example. 
Now that could be a pure cost to them, but it's also an opportunity for them to organize their data in order to be more strategic going forward because now they can move in and out of asset classes more easily or they might be able to offer their front office people more functionality than they ever could be before because their data is organized differently. But in, in the case of a managed database service, for example, you may uh, be able to get away with reallocating analysts who otherwise would have been uh, allocated to the process of managing the data, allocate them back to core competence around investment strategy and search for alpha. Got you. So what you're doing is you're actually increasing the, the profitability side of the equation Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. I think that's a key point because there's both the cost side and the the revenue generation side that if, if brought in the proper balance, you, you absolutely can have a great impact on the bottom line. Yeah, and in our experience, that tends to be the order that people think about these things. So mm -hmm. you, you start with the cost side and then you think about the added profitability going forward. If we can just take a step back and think about the, you think the universe of fixed income, what developments and evolutions we've seen, what do you think the most important next stage is going to be uh, in terms of using data developing things and then the development of the asset class. I think uh, critical is going to be the evolution or the, the move toward electronic trading and the, and the proliferation of new electronic trading venues that you see um, in the fixed income market. Their use of data is, um, is, is significant and I expect to see that grow. Um, the other one is the development of the LEI and we're uh, paying particular attention to that as as more and more LEIs are issued, uh, we're ingesting them and making them part of our offerings, but we see more firms starting to ask us about LEI and the development there, and it has a real promise for um, a significant new uh, standard in the marketplace. So in both cases, we might see something completely new. Absolutely, yes. Those are all very good points. So what we're talking about is a wealth of new data, a new kind of paradigm in how you manage that data and then trying to deploy that to manage your costs down or uh, re-establish re, re, uh, re your, your own firm strategy Absolutely. in line with everything going forward. Great. Well, thanks very much for making the time, Marty. It's been great talking to you, and hopefully we can track this going forward. Absolutely. Thank you, Roddy. Excellent.